Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my first Q&A in a long time. I don't even remember the last time I did a q and I might have mixed it in with like another video. So I think it's definitely been like almost like a year and a half. There was one specific thing that I wanted to address and I'll leave that for last. It's a comment that I've been getting a lot on the Arias War video. That video right now has over 126,000 views and a lot of those have come from the last couple of months. There's like one question or concern or hate comment that i've been getting over and over and over again so i'll address that last i went over on instagram and i just asked you guys to send me a couple questions so i'm gonna try to quickly go through each one of them because i know how i can get and i can just start rambling on the first question is would you ever move out of new jersey as of right now no uh we have no plans in the near future to move out of new jersey um it's something that we do want to do eventually thought about it and we've like contemplated the idea of it but my grandmother is here and i would never like willingly leave the state while she's here so it's not in the near future at all um, the next question is do you plan on moving back to your previous home or are you planning on buying another home if you're new here we did just move out of our house that we were in for five years and we recently rented it out we're currently living with my mom's house because we are saving money to buy another home we could have done it while we still lived there but it's just like an easier faster way of just being able to save up money without having to pay you know the mortgage and all the bills and stuff so we decided to move out first um that way the home was rented out and we could just save so we've been moved out for like about a month now we did not sell the property which was one of the things that we did contemplate doing at some point we decided to just rent it out because we love that home and if our plan doesn't work out um then that is always our backup plan i just love that we still have the property and we always have that option to move back in if we wanted to that's the plans for right now i have talked about it a lot in like the moving uh, videos and stuff oh and i'm currently at a subbing gig but i am on my lunch break and then the next question was which school or course you use for your real estate license i use a company called elite advantage real estate academy they have options to go during the day and they have like an accelerated course where you could just go during the day for like two weeks and then um, pass the class and then you start the study to take your state exam i did the 10-week program which was mondays and wednesday nights for three hours each day because look, that morning shift was just not going to work with me in my schedule so they have a bunch of different options and to me personally i think the school was great and then i ended up buying a program called compucram and that's what i use to study for my state exam i did over 50 hours of study hours on that program and i didn't even finish the program all those study hours and i didn't even finish I think I waited a week or two. I'm not sure if it was like, maybe maybe I did two weeks to give myself one week to study and then I scheduled it and then I was able to pass my state exam on the first try. I do recommend that school. I'll see if I can leave a link somewhere in the description if you guys were interested in that because it is online courses so um you don't have to just be in south jersey to take it you can be also in north jersey as well next question is what do you do for classroom management when you're subbing i actually get this question a lot on my subbing videos like how do i approach the classroom like when i come in so i've been subbing now since september so now we're at like eight months of subbing i do come to those schools three to four times a week i tend to come to the same schools so like the students are familiar with me they know my name and they know my style by now the very first thing that i do when i come into a classroom if the students know me then it's a little bit different i'm like all right guys i've been in this class before you already know whatever the teacher leaves for you to do that is what you should be working on no phones no food no getting up for no reason if you want to get up to sharpen your pencil you raise your hand basically whenever they want to get up from their seat i have them raise their hand because if not then they'll gang up next to the tissues or the front door to like peek out or whatever and then like problem like nothing good happens from when they all start ganging up next to the door i've had tables being broken i had a kid hurt his leg get a cut on his face like all types of stuff i do like this school because they have like smart passes so now like multiple students can't just go out in the hallway like everything is time they have six minutes go to the bathroom and come back and it keeps track of like who's next in line which is really good so the bathroom situation has been kind of resolved for now one thing that i noticed a lot of subs don't do and this is from just experience of like watching other subs a lot of them don't walk around so i am really big on walking around i'm really big on like following the teacher's plans if they're doing an assignment especially if it's like a more than one day assignment for a teacher like i will look at the plans and if they're supposed to be learning something and the teacher's like i'm not going to reteach this so you got to like watch the video and make sure you're paying attention so you know i'll actually sit there and i'll try to do the lesson with them if i understand it if it's like if it's math like i'll understand it because i really like math so i've done that before and i actually found out that i have a five star rating from the teachers that i have subbed for before so that was like really shocking to see and i was like really happy like it's very validating i guess that's the word because i really do try when i'm in the classroom i don't just go and just chill and just sit down do nothing and just like let the kids like 
run crazy, not really do their work. Like, no, like I make sure that they get done what they need to get done. And then afterward, it depends on the students. So if the students that don't deserve privileges to be able to like take their headphones out and listen to music while they work or um, have free time at the end where then they don't get it. But I'll, most of the time, if the teacher just left like a couple worksheets, I'm like, listen, if you get done the worksheets, then the last 10 minutes of class can be your free period. No running around, no crazy, you know, nonsense like that. But you can work on something from another class. You can just hang out for the last 10 minutes, but you have to get your work done first. That tends to work a lot too. And then I've become familiar with some students. They work better, especially if they're very disruptive together. I noticed that letting them have their headphones in while they work on an assignment, um, I'll tell them like, you can have your headphones out, um, no phones, but you can have your headphones out. And that kind of keeps the classroom at bay too, because now they're not bothering each other and like stirring stuff up. Now they're just like in the zone, working on what they need to work on. But all of that in moderation though like I don't just they don't see me and they're like oh we get to have our headphones out like mm. No, I always get like mixed emotions whenever the students see me at the door. Some of the students are like, yes. Some of them are like, here we go. Cause they already know like if they do misbehave, I will leave a note for the teacher and I'll tell them exactly what period, which students gave me a hard time. That way the next time that they see me, they know that I'm paying attention. Like I'm not just letting them do whatever they want. Like I can't just go in there and be like, I'm gonna be the cool sub and just be super chill or whatever. Cause especially in middle school, they will walk all over you and they will try to push whatever boundaries that they can push on you and i had that in the beginning when they were doing that because i was still learning my way but now no ma'am so i can still be a very nice and caring and helpful to them but i don't have to be the cool sub that like that they come in and they think that they can do whatever they want no i'm also not like a mean sub either i've written a couple kids up but anyways, I knew I was gonna stay on that question a long time. Long story short, set your expectations in the beginning of the class and make sure that you follow up with what you're saying because if you do go to that school again and you don't follow up with what you're saying, they remember that and then they know that they can continue to push boundaries. Can you tell that I really love subbing? So switching gears, I got a question about my business, about my she did that business. Are you doing any more projects? Seems like you gave up. I didn't give up. I had to temporarily close taking clients from that because I had three clients for real estate going at the same time. I was subbing, we were moving out of the house and we were moving into a new environment and the kids were going on spring break. Like it was too much happening in a two month period that I was like, I don't have any more weekends to spare to be able to do a job. Like I don't have any days to spare. And then we had to get the house ready for the new tenants. That took up all my extra time. I had no time at all. Now I am gonna start taking new clients. I already have a two consultations lined up one project going for an office room makeover which I'm really excited about so I'm gonna get the ball rolling again with some projects and I'm really excited for that now we've reached the section where I address the hate comment about the arise for a video so the comment is I'm gonna summarize it basically a lot of people have called me a horrible mom horrible human being for not staying with her the entire time while she was in the hospital let me just backtrack just a little bit I was in labor for 18 hours and then I gave birth to her and they rushed her immediately away like that she cried for like two seconds and then then they had to rush her away to the NICU because she wasn't breathing on her own. After they rushed her away to the NICU, they tell me that now I need a surgery to fix the stitching inside because I tore. I had 10 stitches and eight of them were inside and they had to take me into the operating room and stitch me up and they put me to sleep. By the time that I came to, it was already like six, seven hours later. They told me that it was going to get sent to DuPont, a different hospital. So my husband left already to go meet her at that hospital and I had to stay overnight for observation. So I got to that hospital the next day at like 12, 12, 1 o'clock and this is not even 24 hours of me giving birth and having a surgery done. So I was bleeding like crazy. I was going through the adult diapers like that. Here I am now at the hospital trying to see my daughter and go and I have to be walking. They're telling me all these things of what's happening to her. I'm there all day. So finally me and Tommy, we got a hotel room. I went back to the hotel room so that I could take a shower. There was no bed, there was just a sofa. It was me and my husband, no sofa, no bathroom that I could use, nowhere that I can clean myself up. My husband, my father-in-law, my mom, all of them stayed with her while I closed my eyes for two seconds in the hotel room. Sorry, I had to change locations because a lot of people started going in the, in the lunchroom. Long story short, there was always somebody with her. And I'm pretty sure in the video at some point, I say that like I, I, I didn't want to watch her die or I didn't want to, I didn't know how I was going to react when if she died and I was in the room with her, like something along the lines of that. That was me being it was the craziest week of my life i gotta remind you guys i was 22 years old 22 years old this is my first child i hadn't even gotten a chance to hold her everything was happening so fast and honestly i was in denial that she was even gonna pass away up to that point i had never lost somebody in my life i had an uncle who passed away but he passed away when i was really young but up to that point no one that i was close with had ever passed away so i didn't know what it felt like to lose a loved one and here i am 
about to lose a child. Literally just being in denial, I didn't think she was actually gonna die. I thought I was gonna have more time. Long story short, there was always some somebody with her and I didn't leave her by choice. I left her because I had to. I had to go take a shower, I had to go clean myself. I had to take care of myself because my entire body was swollen too. And the last thing that my husband needed was to lose us both. So the doctors were taking care of my daughter and he was taking care of me. Unless you're in the exact same position that I was, you have no room to talk about what you would or would not do. But for the most part, all the videos have been very supportive and loving and caring, but I get those few that are just like, but anyways, if you have any more questions for me, you can always just put them down in the comment section or you can DM me on Instagram and I'll probably do another one if I get like a bunch of questions again. So as always, I appreciate all your love and support and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.